Hi folks, this is Vince with Ads Gaming Addiction, and once again we're going to play a game of X-Wing. Well, sort of. Uh, today I'm going to do something a little different. I've published some videos in the past on, like, uh, ships that newcomers should get, uh, tips for beginners, that kind of thing, but I haven't actually gone through an example game. So what I'm going to do today is just sort of play against myself, explaining as I go, all of the ships and upgrade cards that I'm using are part of the core set. So if all you have is the core set, then you'll be able to follow along and uh, basically if you want to, you can even set up the game yourself and mimic my moves as you're watching me play. That way you get a feel of how everything should move as I'm doing it. So without further ado, let's take a quick look at what ships we picked and what upgrade cards go with them. Okay, so a quick note to you veterans out there, you may find this video boring. <laughs> this video is more meant for beginners and newcomers that want an example of how the game is played without having to watch a video that contains all these ships and upgrade cards that they don't have. Like, I can't picture, you know, a newcomer sitting at his computer watching a game between professionals, seeing these A-Wings and X-Wings and TIE Interceptors and TIE Bombers and Millennium Falcons and all these other ships, all these upgrade cards, doing battle and then them trying to keep track of it all and learn the game that way. I just That would be too intimidating for me to learn how to play. So we're going to keep things simple as I've always maintained in my prior videos. And that's what we're doing today. We've got one X-Wing and two TIE Fighters. That's it. Luke Skywalker's in the X-Wing. He's got Proton Torpedoes. We've got a Black Squadron Pilot and Mauler Mythyl. The Black Squadron Pilot has a pilot skill of four, so he'll be moving first and shooting last. Mahler Mythyl has a pilot skill of 7, and Luke Skywalker has a pilot skill of 8. Since he has the highest out of all three of these, he'll be moving last and shooting first. Uh, as far as, like, initiative and all that jazz, we don't have to worry about that today, because the combined total here is 32 points for the Rebels and 31 points for the Imperials. So, the Rebels have more points than the Imperials, but that really doesn't matter because they all have different pilot skills. So, we won't have to worry about initiative and who would shoot first in this circumstance and all that jazz, okay? So, let's go ahead and move the camera to the left, and I'll show you the ships. Okay, so if you want to set up the game the way I have it, feel free to do so. We're not going to be using the whole mat. If we had more ships and more upgrade cards, I'd have these off to the side away from the mat. But we're only going to use this portion here. I think that's sufficient for three ships. And I'm not really concerned about the distance. Normally when you set up a game of X-Wing, you know, you want to measure the edge of the table like so and, you know, put the ship somewhere behind uh, the one here. There's a little line here above the one. So you want to, you know, try and measure that, but we're not going to worry about that today. We're trying to keep things simple, trying to keep things light. Okay, so I just have the X-Wing here, the TIE Fighters here, no big deal. Okay, so uh, the first thing that players are going to do, and this is probably what takes the longest, is plan their moves during the planning phase. And that involves each player looking at their dials and then uh, basically adjusting them to, uh, you know, plan ahead for the activation phase, which I'll get to in a minute, but basically the Imperial player here for Black Squadron Pilot, let's say that he just wants to come at the X-Wing head on. Just he, he doesn't care that he has no shields. He's just going to go ahead and go head on. So he's going to do a two straight. And the camera doesn't automatically focus. I don't have a dedicated video camera, so it's not going to automatically focus. I apologize. This is a two straight. Note that this is a green maneuver. If he were stressed and after he activated and moved, uh, if he had stress, it would go away. So he's going to do that. He's going to put that face down so his opponent can't see it, but he knows what it is. And then Mahler Mythyl is going to look at his maneuver dial and say, hmm, what am I going to do? Well, um, let's see. What could he do? Let's say he wanted to come at the X-Wing from the side, you know, whatever. So what he could do um, in this case, and it might be easier for me to do it this way because that's the correct orientation. There we go. So we're going to do a... And is there two? Yes, okay. So we're going to do a two curving a little bit. It's not, it's not a hard bank, but it's a slight bank. So uh, he's going to go ahead and do that. And in his head, that means that Mahler Mythyl here... Actually, Mahler Mythyl... Let's switch these around. There we go. So Mahler Mythyl is here. Black Squadron Pilot is here. And he's trying to get Mahler Mythyl to go off in this direction and come at him from the side. And then this TIE Fighter here is just going to come at him straight. Now, Luke here, he has no idea. The other player doesn't, has no idea 
what the TIE Fighters are going to do. He has to try and think ahead, okay, so what would, what would I do in his shoes? I've got two TIE Fighters, and I've got one X-Wing. Would, would he try to box me in? Would he come at me straight ahead? I don't know. Well, what, what are his abilities? Uh, that's another good question you want to ask yourself. What are these guys good at? Well, let's take a look at Mahler Mythel's ability. When attacking at range 1, roll 1 additional attack die. That is a very powerful ability. If he can get Mauler Mythyl close enough to the X-Wing here, and at range 1, he gets an extra attack die. Normally, he only gets 2 attack die. There's a little red number here, and that says 2. So, if he were at range 1, he'd get an extra one. In addition to that, whenever you are at range 1 to begin with, you get an extra attack die. So uh, this player here, if he gets Mauler Mythyl at range 1 against this X-Wing, he would get 4 attack dies. One for the range 1 rule, and then one for this special ability. Any ship at range 1, when you're close enough, can shoot an extra attack die, or roll an extra attack die. But Mauler Mythyl here has the ability to do an extra one on top of that. So Mauler Mythyl really wants to avoid damage, get close to the X-Wing, maybe even get behind them even, and just, you know, just roll at him with a bunch of attack die and try and knock him out. So the X-Wing here is trying to think, okay, so what am I going to do? Well, what's my special ability? I've got, uh, when defending, you may change one of your focus results to an evade result. So that means that if he were to roll a focus, uh, he can change it into an evade result, which is great. That's what he wants. Uh, he can take a focus action if he wants to. Again, each pilot has different abilities, like the TIE Fighters have focus, and a barrel roll, and uh, the evade action. The X-Wing has the focus and the target lock action, and the target lock allows him to shoot the proton torpedo card. It's a one-time use, by the way, so keep that in the back of your mind. But it ignores the range roll, so at range 3, normally you'd have to roll one less attack die. The proton torpedo is a secondary weapon and is not subject to that particular roll, which is kind of nice. If you're a little confused by what I'm saying with, with regard to all these things, I do have a tutorial video out there that explains more of this in detail. But for right now, we're just going to play a practice game. Hopefully you get uh, you know, a feel of it as we go. So the X-Wing here, you're probably like, all right, I know, let's move this guy already, right? So uh, what we're going to do is the X-Wing knows that, uh, you know, he's in trouble. So he wants to try and take one on at a time, if he can, while keeping his, him, himself out of the line of fire. He does have two shields over there, so he can take some hits before he starts to knock off some of his hull. Um, why don't we do... What do we do? Uh, well, he has that Proton Torpedoes card, so what he wants to do is get somewhere around range 3. Like, in his head, he's trying to think, okay, if this TIE Fighter moves, he may end up somewhere here. And if I move, I may end up somewhere here. And in my head, I'm trying to think, okay, so what... You normally can't do this in a game. You can't put the range roller on the table and plan your move out based on this. You, you have to do that in your head. But you get an idea of, okay, so this TIE Fighter may end up here, and this X... You know, if I go, like, say, two straight ahead, I may end up somewhere around here. Somewhere. Again, this is all in your head, and uh, I'll be at range 3, and I can take a target lock. Now, this is the important thing here, and this is where pilot skill comes into play. Because he is a 4, he moves first. That's very important. Had, uh, had the TIE Fighter moved after Luke, Luke may not have been in range to actually uh, do a target lock. So, because the TIE Fighter moves first, Luke Skywalker, after he moves, he has a better chance of initiating that target lock. Uh, so, like, if Luke had moved first during the activation phase, which I'll get to in a minute, uh, he, would, he, he might still be out of range, as you can see here, to do a target lock. He'd have to, like, move, like, I don't know, three or four straight ahead in order to almost guarantee that he could get a target lock. But that's not the case. Again, we're just messing around here. But let's just do, um, let's just do two straight ahead, okay? for Luke, and then we're going to put that face down. And that was the planning phase. Now, normally it wouldn't take that long, because I'm explaining a whole lot, but I think you get the idea. Each player in their head will plan their movement for each of their ships, and that's pretty much the planning phase. Okay, so here comes the activation phase. Once players are done with that, we move on to the activation phase, and we activate our ships uh, by moving them in uh, order of pilot skill, lowest to highest. Now, like I was saying, this Black Squadron pilot has a 4, this one has a 7, this one has an 8. So the 4 moves first, then the 7, then the 8. So we're going to go ahead and reveal his dial first. And it is a 2 straight ahead, as we did during the planning phase. And we're going to take the appropriate template, assuming I have it. Uh, there we go, 2 straight ahead. 
and we're going to just do something like that. We're going to put the template right there, and then we're going to keep the template there and move him to the other side, and there you go. That's two straight ahead. Now, because he is not stressed out, uh, you get stressed out when you take a red maneuver. Uh, it's not stressed out, it's stressed, but because he's not stressed, he can go ahead and take an action. And again, he's got focus, he's got a barrel roll, and he's got a, an evade. Some other cards will allow you to take other actions. So that there's some other upgrade cards in the game that allow you to do things that you normally wouldn't see, or that, that you see here. Normally you wouldn't be able to do them, but you know an upgrade card would allow you to perform that action. But in this case, they have no upgrade cards, so focus, barrel roll, or evade. So what's he going to do? Well, here's the thing. Evade is a good, or the evade will guarantee that if he does get hit, he can spend this evade token and negate one damage. That's very useful to have. At the same time, he could take a focus, and focus can be used for attack and defense, whereas the evade is just for defense. So it's sort of like in his head, what's he, what's he going to do? Is he going to take a focus, and when he rolls his die, he can make a decision, okay, am I going to use the focus for attack, or maybe I want to use it for defense? The focus, by the way, Whenever you play the focus token, it'll switch, no matter what you use it for, if you use it for attack, and that's the red die, you're going to switch that over to a hit, okay? If it's a focus on a defense uh, die, you're going to flip that over to an evade. So the evade is a guaranteed negate damage kind of thing, whereas the focus... It's nice to have, but if you don't roll a focus on these die, then it's useless to you. It's, it's just going to go to waste. So, but, but you roll more defense die. Let's say you roll three defense die on this TIE Fighter here. That's, well, that's not, there we go. So you have, like, let's say you roll a blank and two focus here, and you have a focus token. Well, that turns into two evades, and boom, there you go. That could probably negate any damage that you might receive. So it, there's a little bit of decision making involved there. Well, in this case, we're going to take a focus action, and uh, Muller Mythel now gets to go next. So we're going to go ahead and reveal his die. Each player gets only one action. Darth Vader gets two. Just, just saying. But that's a separate expansion. We're not going to worry about that. Uh, Muller Mythel is going to go a two bank, which is in. It's not this one. It's the slight turn. There we go. So we're going to do this. All right. Now Muller Mythel in his head is saying, okay, I really want to get behind the X-Wing. So he's thinking to himself, can I do a barrel roll that would allow me to stay out of his firing arc or possibly get me somewhere else? Uh, you know, that, that's, that's, that's what he's thinking. And to do a barrel roll, you take this one template here, and you, you can put it on either side like this, like this here, any, any part here, or any part on this side, and then you could pick up the ship and, like, bring it over here, and then you could put it anywhere you want along that template. So you could do something like that. And that, some, in some cases, will get you out of the line of fire. So that, that is one thing he could do. But let's just say he's just going to, I don't know, let's say he decides to take a, uh, let's see, let's see he can take an evade, sure, whatever. He's not going to be able to shoot this round because his firing arc is this way. And he may not even be close enough. It depends on what the X-Wing does. So let's say that the X-Wing now, uh, it's his, the X-Wing's turn. These two are done. The, he's going to go two straight ahead. All right. And that's going to be the same way. All right. Now the X-Wing is saying, okay, um, I am pretty sure that I am close enough to do something. So he's going to, again, he can't measure this, but in his head he's thinking, okay, so I'm either at range two or three. So what I'm going to do, and again, you can't do that, but I'm just trying to show you where he's at in relation to the other player. He's going to go ahead and take a target lock action. Again, the X-Wing has the focus and the target lock action. And the reason why he's taking a, a target lock is he can do one of two things with this. He can spend it during a normal attack to re-roll any number of his attack dice in case they come out really bad, or he can spend it to use this proton torpedo card. So uh, he's got a lot of different things he can do with that. Alternatively, he could take a focus, and uh, that would allow him to, um, if he rolls attack or defense dice, you can turn those into evade or hit, depending on what die it is. So yeah, that's that. So uh, Luke Skywalker has activated, moved, took the action, and now we're going to move on to the combat phase. Okay, so on the combat phase, uh, the order is determined by pilot skill, again, but it's from highest to lowest, which means that Luke Skywalker gets to shoot first, which is great for him, uh, because he knows that this TIE fighter is going to shoot back at some point. Now, uh, what he's going to do, he's got this target lock, and he's thinking to himself, do I want to use my proton torpedoes now, or do I want to save them? 
Well, let's just go ahead and use them, because we can. So, what he's going to do is he's going to spend his target lock. The card says, spend your target lock and discard this card to perform this attack. He gets four attack dice. Now, normally the game only comes with three attack dice, which, you know, kind of stinks. I do have... Uh, let's see. I'm just going to take, now normally this would not come with the core set. I have an extra attack die here, uh, so I'm going to use that so that I don't have to re-roll anything. But um, he gets four attack dice. This is range two to three. Had they been at range one, like right now they are at range, uh, this is range two. Closest base to closest base. It fall, The little marker falls here, and there's some parts of the ship above this line. So, um, yeah, so it's range two, so that's that's fine. And, okay, and the special ability is you may change one of your focus results to a critical hit. So that's pretty powerful. Critical hits are damaging, especially when they hit an unshielded craft. If, they, if a critical hit hits a shield, nothing happens. I mean, you take the damage, but you don't have to flip uh, any damage cards because you don't get damage cards when you, have, when you get hit on your shields. But if a hit, uh, if you get damage against your hull... Then, on a regular hit, you get a face, uh, face down damage card. If it's a critical hit on a hull, it's face up. So, anyway, getting back to this, you've got Proton Torpedoes. He's going to use that. He gets to roll four attack dice. So, he's going to shake these up and roll them. Okay, now this was actually a pretty crappy roll here. He has to spend the target lock and he has to spend the Proton Torpedoes. As you can see, he has three blanks and one focus. Now, he could... Again, he's going to use that special ability. You may change one of your focus results into a critical hit. So he's going to change this into a critical hit. So he's got three blanks and one critical. At most, he could do one critical damage against the TIE Fighter. Now, the TIE Fighter has some defense here. The, according to this, the evade or the green number on his card is three, meaning he can roll three, attack, or three defense dice. rather. So he's going to shake these up, roll them. He's got two blank and an evade. And this is what I was talking about. Uh, he's got no focus whatsoever on these dice. So this focus token was not used at all for this defense. However, he may still be able to use it for offense. So uh, at this, in this case, the critical hit and the evade, they cancel each other out and no damage is done. So Luke Skywalker is in a pretty bad way right now. He used his proton torpedoes. It is now gone. And he did no damage whatsoever to that TIE Fighter. So he's sort of in trouble right now. All right, so now we're going to move on to the next pilot. The next one down is Mauler Mithil here. And Mauler Mithil does not have a firing solution. There's a primary firing arc here. It goes this way and this way. Okay, and, and this X-Wing is not in it. So we skip him, and now we move on to this TIE Fighter here. He's got a focus token. He's rearing to go. He's at range 2, and because he's at range 2, there's no distance penalty or anything like that. Had Luke Skywalker been at range 3, like that, then the X-Wing here would get to roll an extra defense die. However, the TIE Fighter would not, because, again, with a secondary weapon, you do not take distance into consideration when you're figuring out how many dice you should roll. But with a primary weapon... Uh, you do want to take distance into consideration. So this guy has two attack, two red here. So that's two attack dice. And the X-Wing has two defense. That's two green. So we're going to do that. Now he's going to go ahead and roll. All right, now he's got a hit and a focus. Okay, now he's going to spend his focus because, you know, why not? He's going to lose it at the end of this round. He's going to go ahead and spend that, and now he's got two hits. So he's got two hits. Now, Luke Skywalker better roll something good here. So he's going to go ahead and do that. Whoa, look at that. Two evade. Two evade. So no damage. They cancel each other out, and no damage is done. So this round was basically a wash. No damage was done, and uh, we're going to clean up unused tokens. In this case, this evade token goes away. You don't keep tokens. I mean, unless an upgrade card or ability says otherwise, um, you know, focus tokens and evade tokens, they go away. Target locks remain, however. So, uh, now that's all done, let's go ahead and move back to the planning phase again for the next round. All right, so this is the planning phase again, and now the TIE Fighters and the X-Wings have to figure out what it is they want to do. Um, well, this TIE Fighter here is thinking to himself, okay, well, if I go too fast, I may end up passing him. Um, I do have something on my dial called a uh, K-turn, which is this red little loop here. And that basically allows him to go a certain amount of distance and then flip the ship 180 degrees going in the other direction. But that does cause stress because it is a red maneuver. And he wouldn't be able to take an action after that. But he might be in a good position. However, he realizes, you know what? 
I'm a pilot skill of four. That means I move first. So I may end up running into him if I do this four straight ahead. I, in my head, I'm trying to think, okay, is the four straight ahead, is that going to hit him or not? I don't know. Like in my, I mean, it, the professionals would probably know, you know, but in this case, if he were to do it, just to give you an example, he would go to the end of this template. And yes, he would. He would hit this X-wing here and he would not make the turn, and he would still be stressed because of it. So this red one would be a bad, uh, bad idea. Again, this is all in his head. He's not allowed to use the template to test things out prior. But I wanted to give you an idea as to what could happen if he decided to do that. I knew in my head that that would happen, but um, <laughs> maybe so a three straight might, or a three K turn might be in order. He would still be stressed, but if, he's, if Luke Skywalker decides to you know, shoot past and go after Mauler Mythel here, then this guy might be in a good position to do some damage from the back. So maybe he's going to go ahead and do that. He's going to do a 3K turn. He's going to put that face down so Luke can't see it. Mauler Mythel here, uh, again, this is the same player, so he knows that this guy is going to do a K turn. So he's going to think, okay, so maybe if I do a turn and come at Luke from the side, maybe I could do that. So he's going to do a hard uh, turn. He's going to do a hard bank. Okay, And whenever I'm... I'm Looking at it from this angle, I'm turning the, the dial upside down so I can see the correct orientation and which way they're going to go. So he's got that. And now Luke Skywalker, he's like, oh, man, what am I going to do? This guy's probably going to K-turn on me. This guy's going to come at me. So what am I going to do with this? Well, uh, he has a few options. He could uh, get the heck out of there. He's got this four straight ahead. He could fly past this... Uh, TIE Fighter in the hopes of being uh, somewhat out of range when this TIE Fighter decides to K-turn. He doesn't know he's going to K-turn, but he, has, he suspects he's going to. Or he could do something else. He could, um, he could uh, try to collide with this guy on purpose so that this TIE Fighter and this X-Wing can't target each other, but he could still target Mauler Mythyl over here. So maybe what he's going to do, he's going to go ahead and do a one slight turn toward Mauler Mythyl because uh, he knows that this guy's going to swing around at some point. So uh, he's going to do that. He's going to do a one slight turn, and that will resolve the, uh, act or the uh, planning phase. And now we're going to move on to the activation phase. Okay, so now we're at the activation phase. I'm going to move a little bit more quickly here because, you know, my battery life only lasts so long. Uh, we're going to start with the four. And according to that, this is a 3K turn, as we did during the planning phase. So we're going to do this here. And as you can see, it does not hit the X-Wing. However, if Luke were to do a high like a high speed, he'd shoot right past them, and then the TIE Fighter would be right behind him. So this guy is counting on Luke doing a really fast maneuver. Now this stresses this guy because that was a red maneuver, so we're going to put a stress token right next to that. And because of that, he does not get to take an action. Now Mauler Mythyl gets to go. He's in number seven, so he gets to go next. He does the uh, two hard bank toward the players. If I can find it, that'd be awesome. Uh, there we go. All right. Now Muller Mythol resolves it like so. And now he's in a really good spot. Look at that. So um, he's going to go ahead and take a focus. All right. And now finally, uh, Luke Skywalker gets to go. He's not too happy about this turn of events. Um, he could have K-turned. That could have been another thing for him. But he would have ended up face-to-face -face with this TIE Fighter here and still possibly in range of this TIE Fighter here. He didn't know. So he's going to do a one slight turn. And the reason he did that... Um, he might actually not collide with this. He might. This is going to be this is going to be a little close. He was trying to collide with this, but well, let's take a look. We do this. Okay, so he ends up right outside. See, the way he was trying to do this, he was trying to collide so that he would end up here. Whenever you collide with another ship, you backtrack along the template until you're no longer. Uh, you know, in, until you're just touching like that. In this case, these two ships cannot target each other, and he'd still be in range to attack Mauler Mythyl. That was his plan. Well, um, in this case, he ends up shooting past the TIE Fighter. Let's just put this, uh, what's the best way to do this? Let's just, we'll eyeball it. Again, this is normally not what you do, but he shoots past it like so, ends up here, and he's pretty close range to Mauler Mythyl here, and this TIE Fighter comes back, and this ends up something like this. So, it's, it's, this TIE Fighter did great. I mean, he, he's right up Luke's butt, <laughs> you know, so to speak, and he could fire an extra attack dice. He can roll an extra attack dice now because he's at range one. Now, Luke Skywalker still gets to take an action, though, and this guy does not. Remember, he has a stress. So uh, he's going to go ahead and do a target lock because he knows that 
uh, at range one, I mean, he, he's eyeballing it. He's like, you know what, this is a range one attack for me. So he's going to try and take out Mauler Mythyl quickly before he has a chance to, sh to fire back. So Luke took the target lock action, and now we'll move on to the combat phase. Okay, so at this point, again, Luke gets to shoot first because he has the highest pilot skill. So, again, I, I'm just in eyeballing it. He, it's at range one, but just to show you guys that it's legit. And it doesn't really matter what color you use. Red is Rebels and green is Imperial because that's the color of their lasers. But as you can see, it's clearly range one. Even, I didn't even have to do this. But anyway, um, so Luke Skywalker normally has three attack dice, but because he's at range one, he gets four attack dice. And on top of that, he has the target lock. And if he spends that, he can re-roll any number of dice that he wants to. Of course, he could have taken a focus if he wanted, but a target lock, I prefer target locks. Okay, so this is actually pretty nasty. What he's going to do, he's going to spend his target lock and re-roll these two focus. He's got a hit and a crit, which he's going to keep, and then he's going to re-roll his two focus tokens. Had he had a focus token, he could have had four hits right now. So the focus might have actually been better for him, but you never know what the dice are going to do to you. All right, now he's got a focus and another crit. Now this is, this is killer against an unshielded crap. That's two possible critical hits, okay? So that's just, and, and these resolve first on top of that. So anyway, um, let's just see what the TIE Fighter ends up rolling. He's got three defense die. He does have a focus though. All right, now he's got two blank and an evade. Now this is actually kind of nasty. Now the way this works is the uh, evade cancels out the hits first and then the critical hits resolve. So in this case, he's got two critical hits against Mauler Mythyl. So what we're going to do is we're going to deal two face-up damage cards to Mauler Mythyl. Okay, so this is what I drew. Minor Hall Breach. After executing a red maneuver, roll one attack dice. On a hit result, suffer one damage. Injured Pilot. All players must ignore your pilot ability and all of your upgrade cards. Now, this is killer because his ability says, when attacking at range one, roll one additional attack die. He no longer has that. That's what made him so great. But he doesn't have that anymore, unfortunately. Now, he's got two... Uh, damage. He can take three. He's got a yellow three over here. So he can take three damage. Now we're going to put this critical hit token next to him just to remind us, hey, you know what? He's got some debuffs on his character that uh, would prevent him from doing things normally. So uh, that's that. So yeah, Mauler Mythyl took some nasty hits there. Next, we're going to fire back with Mauler Mythyl again. It would normally be four attack dice at range one because of his ability, but because of that critical hit over here, that's ignored. He's going to roll three attack dice. He gets two normally, but uh, that extra or that range one gives you an extra one. So we're going to do that. He's got a hit and two blanks. So Luke Skywalker is going to roll two defense. He's got an evade. That cancels out. No damage. Okay. Next up, we've got the Black Squadron pilot back here. He is also at range one. Gets to roll three attack dice. Uh, wow, a hit and two crits. Now, Luke is in trouble here. He's going to take at least one damage because he only has two defense die. So, he's going to go ahead and roll these and hope for the... Okay, two focus. Now, his ability says, when defending, you may change one of your focus results to an evade. So, he goes ahead and flips this over. He's got one evade that cancels out the hit, okay? But there's still two criticals to resolve. Now, like I was saying earlier, critical hits do not affect shields. Luke Skywalker has two shield tokens. Both of these go away because of this, and that's it. So Luke is now shieldless, he has three hall left, and that ends this round. Any unused tokens, like the focus here, goes away, and we're good to go. All right, so now that we're back at the planning phase, Luke is thinking to himself, okay, so what would I do in the TIE Fighter's shoes? Well, he would think that Mauler Mythyl would actually do a K-turn so that he could end up in a good firing position. But remember, the Minor Hall Breach says, after executing a red maneuver, which is what a K-turn is, roll one attack die. He could actually be destroyed if he rolls an attack die and, and rolls a hit result. He suffers one damage, gets three damage cards, and he's out. So roll it, or doing a red maneuver right now is very risky for him because he could blow up and die. So Ru uh, Luke realizes this and goes, you know what, maybe a K-turn wouldn't be a bad idea. The only thing I'd have to contend with is this guy. However, this guy could do a slight turn, green maneuver, get rid of this, and take an action, and then this guy could do some damage to Luke. But he's hoping that's not the case. The other thing he could possibly do is he could maybe do a turn. If we take a look at his maneuver dial... He could do a two hard bank. The downside is that his firing solution would be over here, and he may not be in range of anything that way. 
So he's he's kind of in a bad way. I think a K turn would be his best bet. At least he'd be able to attack something. So he's going to do a 4K turn. He would not be able to take an action after that. The TIE Fighters are thinking to themselves, okay, and this guy's like, you know what, I'm kind of in trouble. I'm not going to do a K turn. Uh, I'd, I'd, I want to get in a position, though. So he's, he has this one hard bank. So he's going to hope that if he turns, that he'd be in a good position after Luke moves and maybe, maybe be in a good firing position. And this is a white maneuver, by the way. So he's not in danger of... Uh, blowing up or anything via a roll. Um, and then we've got this other TIE Fighter. He's stressed. So he wants to do a green maneuver if he can. That way he can take an action. Um, he's going to do a two slight turn. But he has to think to himself, am I going to collide my two TIE Fighters? Because this one's moving to the side here. Now if I do two tur slight turn, am I going to run into him and lose my action? So now the TIE Fighter, this Imperial player is thinking to himself, okay, so do I want to do that? Or do I want to do something else? Do I want to go three straight? That way I know I miss him. Or maybe three turn and that way I know I miss him. Or do we want to do a two slight turn? Let's just risk the two slight turn and see what happens. So we're going to do that. Okay, so now uh, we're going to move on to the activation phase. All right, so the activation phase starting with the four here. Now one thing I didn't think about was that this TIE Fighter here gets to move first. And because of that, he might actually run into the X-Wing if he's not careful. But I'm pretty sure that the two would actually take him past the X-Wing, just barely. So we're going to do a two slight turn. And yeah, that, that he clears it. Now, whenever you uh, try to see if it's uh, a collision or not, I mean, you can... You know, you can do this, that's fine. So as long as the end, the ship at the end here doesn't collide with anything. Because it's said it, to be moving above or below a ship that you're passing through. So that's, that's fine. So this is, this is completely fine. That was a green maneuver, by the way. So he loses this stress token, no, no problem there. And he gets to take an action. Now, he doesn't know what this X-Wing's going to do. Maybe the X-Wing's going to fly to the side. Or maybe he's going to go straight into his sights. He doesn't know. So he's going to take a focus because he can play that on either offense or defense. The uh, TIE Fighter here, Mauler Mythel, is going to do a one hard turn in the hopes of being in a good way. Okay, now this is actually... All right, so he ends up here. This is really tight. All right, so he ends up right in front here. Now, if the X-Wing had a, uh, an all-stop maneuver, that would be awesome for him, but he unfortunately can't do that. Now, he's going to go ahead and take an action. That was a white maneuver. That was a... He's going to take a focus. And now, uh, Luke Skywalker is going to resolve his move. It's a 4K turn. So uh, he takes stress. He cannot take an action, unfortunately. But, oops, the X-Wing fell off the base here. That's why you should never pick them up by their ship. All right, there we go. And boom. Okay, so he is stressed. He cannot take an action, but he is in a good way here because this TIE Fighter cannot attack him. He's outside the firing arc. This one, however, is. So he's got to worry about this guy here, and he's got focus on top of it. All right, so that re uh, resolves the activation phase. And this one belonged to Muller Mythel, which is this guy. Okay. Yes, yeah, so that resolves the activation phase, and now we're going to move on to the combat phase. Okay, so Luke Skywalker gets to shoot first, and he's thinking in his head, okay, so do I want to attack this guy who's at full health, or do I want to attack Muller Mythel and finish him off if I can? So he's thinking to himself, okay, is, is this guy going to be at range 1 or range 2? He thinks that this guy's going to be at range 2, but this guy might actually be in range 1. And at range 1, he could roll an extra uh, attack die against him. However... At some point, he's thinking ahead, he's like, one TIE Fighter would probably be easier to deal with than two. So I think what he's going to do, he's going to go after Muller Mythel here and try and finish him off. So that is a range two there. So he gets a uh, normal attack die. There's no range penalty. Now, there's no, um, yeah, there, there's no ability there. It's, he's stressed, so he can't do focus or target lock. All right, so he's got a hit and a crit. Okay, and a focus. So this guy better roll at least two evade <laughs> or get two focus or, or some combination. He has uh, three defense die. All right, so he's got an evade and he's got uh, a focus. Okay, so he's going to use his focus token that he has and flip this over to an evade. So these two hits cancel out. And no damage is done. So Luke Skywalker is kind of in trouble right now. So now um, this guy, Muller Mythel, cannot attack. He does not have the firing solution on Luke, so he can't do anything. This guy is going to shoot, and let's see if he was at range 1. He is. He's at range 1, so maybe Luke would have been better off shooting this guy. Um, so he gets 3 attack dice. Normally he gets 2, but because of the range 1 rule, he gets 3. He's going to roll. Now it's a hit and 2 focus. He's going to spend his focus token, because he knows Luke's already fired this round. He doesn't need it for defense. So that turns into... Uh, 
two more hits. So that's three hits now that he has against Luke. And that could actually finish him off if Luke does not roll any uh, defense. So he's going to go ahead and roll. Two evade. He got lucky there. He only takes one damage. Now this is a regular hit. So he just takes a face down damage card. And he's got two hull left. So that resolves this particular combat. Any extra tokens like focus or evade or remove, but there's nothing like that. And now we're going to move back to the planning phase again. All right, so Luke is kind of in trouble here. He has a stress token. He wants to get rid of it. So what he's going to do during the planning phase is probably do something nice and easy. He knows this TIE fighter is probably going to turn right into his sights, more than likely. Or he may even do a K turn and risk it. If he does a K turn, he has to roll for damage. Uh, but uh, what's this guy going to do? He's thinking to himself, what's that going to do? He's going to do a K turn maybe. So maybe I want to do two straight. But if I do two straight... Uh, let's just do one straight. He's thinking this TIE Fighter may, well, see this is, this is his dilemma. If he goes one straight, he has to hope that this TIE Fighter remains somewhere over here so that he can shoot him. However, if this TIE Fighter ends up going really far out, then he's not going to be able to target anybody. And this TIE Fighter here could slip behind and do some damage. So maybe what he's going to do is he knows that this guy can't K-turn without risking death. So he's going to do a one slight turn so that it increases his odds of this TIE Fighter being in the firing solution. Now, he's remember, this guy moves first before Luke, and Luke knows that. So he's going to, he's going to guess that this guy is going to be out of range or out of this general area by the time he's ready to make his move. So... That's Luke. Now, the Obsidian Squadron, or the Black Squadron pilot, rather. Sorry, I've got too many pilots in my head. This guy, he's like, you know what, I really want to get behind Luke. He knows that he's going to, because he has a stress token, he knows that he can't take another K-turn, because you can't take a red maneuver when you're already stressed. So he knows that Luke's range is going to be limited here. Uh, he just doesn't know which way he's going to go. But he knows that he could K-turn and possibly get behind him. Now, the question is, if he K-turns, will he run into Luke again? Or, you know, almost run into Luke again. He could K-turn and, you know, may, may end up right here. Or maybe back here. Or maybe he wants to veer off. Or maybe uh, he wants to come this way and then K-turn, come back at him this way. Or maybe turn this way, then K-turn and come back this way. Or just, I don't know. That's, that's the beauty of this. All right, he's going to risk a 4K turn. And uh, Muller Mythel here, he's going to do another one hard bank. And the reason he's doing that, he's like, oh, you're probably thinking to yourself, well, he's going to run into this guy. Why would you do that? He's going to run into this guy. No, because, again, the activation is resolved in order of pilot skill. This four would have moved by the time the seven would have uh, been ready to move. So this pilot is going to be K-turning. He knows that this pilot's going to K-turn. So he's going to K-turn out, and then when the seven comes to uh, activate, this, this spot will be free. So he's free to do a hard turn there. So that's what uh, is going to happen here. That's the planning phase, and now we'll move on to the activation phase. Okay, activation phase. Uh, again, starting with the pilot with the lowest skill. That's the number four here. That's the pilot skill four, Black Squadron. He's going to do a 4K turn. And as you can see, he does clear the X-Wing. Nothing happens. He does receive a red maneuver. Or not red maneuver. That's a red maneuver. He gets a stress token, rather. And now, uh, so no action. Now we've got Mauler Mythel here. He's going to do a one hard turn. And apologies if I'm speeding things up a bit. I'm trying to stay ahead of my battery life. <laughs> so he's going to do this. That goes with him. And that's a white maneuver, so no stress. He does get to take an action. He's going to go ahead and do a focus. And last but not least, Luke now, he's going to think to himself, you know what, I may end up hitting this guy. So maybe this one hard turn, or this one slight turn wasn't a good idea. All right, so he's going to do this. And, yeah, he ends up hitting this guy. Now, the way that works, and Mahler Mythel planned that all along. Not really, but... So this the X-Wing uh, goes along the template and then ends up somewhere around here. And again, I'm eyeballing this. So, because Luke Skywalker collided with Mauler Mythel, A, they don't attack each other because you can't attack when you're touching like that. And B, you cannot take an action when you run into somebody. So, uh, now this, he did do a green maneuver, so that does go away. He's ready for next round. However, he does not get to take an action anyway. So, uh, we're going to move on to the combat phase real quick because this is going to be a very quick combat phase. The only one that can attack is this guy back here. And the only thing he gets is, I think, either two or three attack dice. He's either at range one or two. He's actually at range one. So he gets three attack dice against Luke. And he rolls uh, two hits and a focus. It's actually a pretty good roll. And now Luke has to roll something good. Two blank. Wow. Okay, so that's two damage. Luke Skywalker gets two face-down damage cards and is removed from the game.
And unfortunately, that's just how this worked out. I, I, this wasn't pre-planned or anything like that. Now, if you want to, I can keep going. Let's just say that he rolled an evade, okay? And he took one more damage, in case you want to see a little bit more gameplay, okay? I can fudge things a little. You know, I'm making this up as I go. So let's just say that there was only one damage there, and we're still in the game. So we're, now we're going to move back to the planning phase again, and uh, hopefully Luke fares better next time. Okay, so we're back to the planning phase again. Luke is near death. Mauler Mithil is near death. So Luke's trying to decide what the heck he's going to do. Uh, this guy's got his number, obviously. So he's going to try and maybe do a K-turn and then knock out Mauler Mithil because he knows Mauler Mithil has a stress and has to go straight or somewhat, uh, somewhat straight so he can use a green maneuver to get rid of that. Or, I mean, of course, this guy could do a white maneuver, do a bank, and you know try and get away from the battle and let this guy finish Luke off by himself. That's another possibility. But uh, Luke's going to think to himself, you know what, let's just, I need to get rid of these TIE fighters before something bad happens. I mean, I was near death once and some miraculous person came out of the nebula nearby and saved me. I don't know. What, it, it, me. It was me. Anyway, <laughs> uh, what we're going to do, or the force saved him. We'll go with that. The force saved him, okay? So the force saved him, and that was all me. But uh, he's going to do a uh, red maneuver, because if he does a turn, like if he turns this way, or if he turns this way, his firing solution is either going to be over here, or it's going to be over here. Nowhere near these TIE fighters. And these TIE fighters, this guy, even if he goes straight, very, you know, if he goes, a, if this guy does a straight maneuver, he's going to be targeting Luke. So Luke wants to get out of there, but he also wants to get his targeting solution or a firing arc, you know, into, into a place that can actually attack somebody. So he's going to do a 4K turn here. And now these TIE fighters have to figure out what they're going to do. This 4 needs to get rid of that stress. So he's going to go ahead and do a 2 straight. Now here's the thing. If he does that, he'll end up running into Luke. He knows he, he's eyeballing it. He's like, you know, I move first. And because Luke is still there, when I move, I'm going to run into him. I'll remove my stress token. I won't get an action, though, because I'll hit him. Um, so maybe he might want to do a two-slight turn and hope that his firing arc is still in a good way to attack Luke. So maybe he'll do that. He doesn't know what Luke's going to do, but he suspects Luke is going to do a K-turn because that's what he would do <laughs> because I'm me. Anyway, um, Mulder Mithil now. He has to do uh, something safe because, again, he's got that damage uh, card over there that says if he does a red maneuver, he could die. Uh, so he might do something like, uh, hmm, he could do a hard turn, but he knows that this TIE fighter is going this way. So if he does a turn, he might actually run into his own ship. So maybe he might want to, I mean, he could risk a K turn. He might risk it mm, or not. He knows that Luke is near death. If he can, if he can risk it and roll right, I mean, uh, uh, let's look at the odds, okay? Never tell me the odds. But on the, the card says on a hit result, suffer one damage. How many hits are on a die? Well, you've got one. You've got uh, not the critical hits, mind you, just the regular hits. You got one. You've got two. You've got three. So he's got a three and eight chance of dying should he do a K turn or any red maneuver. So he, that's to him, that's like you know what? That's a pretty good. That's a pretty good. Uh, Pretty good bet. However, if he does a K-turn, he might actually run into Luke. Because this guy, or, or no, no, he, I'm sorry. This guy is going to be moving. The 4 is going to be gone by then. So, yeah, the K-turn would actually work for the 7 here. So, let's just do it. He's feeling gutsy. So, he's going to do that. And now we're going to move on to the activation phase. All right. So, this is the moment of truth for uh, Mahler Mythel here. He's going to go ahead and, well, first the 4 gets to move. The 4 is going to do uh, his planned 2-turn like so. And that puts him somewhere over here. Now, he, he notices his firing arc, and he's thinking to himself, okay, so is the X-Wing going to turn this way or do a K-turn? What's he going to do? Do I want to stay out of his firing arc, or what do I want to do? So maybe he's going to take a focus, because, you know, maybe for defense, should that happen. Uh, Muller Mythel gets to go next. This stress actually goes... Now, actually, this is a green maneuver, so this stress goes away. Again, I'm trying to speed things up, and I'm missing a few things here as I go. But this was a green maneuver, so the stress goes away. Now Mauler Mythel gets to go. He reveals that it's a 4K turn now. So he's going to have to roll one of these die and hope that it's not a hit. Boom! Oh, man, Mauler Mythel is dead. He rolled this hit. He is out. The odds were just not with him. Never tell me the odds. So because of that, this, he's, he's, he's dead. Sorry, Muller Mythil. He gets a damage. He gets a face down damage card. There's three hits against Muller Mythil. And as we know, TIE Fighter pilots do not become one with the Force. So 
Luke Skywalker was okay to be saved by the Force, but the TIE Fighter, they're the red shirts of the Imperial, you know, fleet. So, you know, they're, they're going to die anyway. So, any, all right, Muller Mithil's dead. So now, we have to resolve this guy here now. He's going to go ahead and activate. Uh, what, what did he do? Where did we, oh, we already moved him. Now we're on to Luke. All this Force talk has me confused. Okay, so the 4K turn is what Luke's going to do. And, again, Luke is in a bad way because, look, this TIE Fighter has a focus token. He doesn't get to take an action because he just K a turn, and that's a red maneuver. So that's a, that's a stress token. So even though Luke gets to shoot first, he better be pretty darn lucky to knock this guy out. And, and he's got, this guy's full health. He's got three hits still. Whereas Luke needs one more hit and he's out of the game. So he's going to go ahead and we're going to move on to the combat phase now because I'm running out of battery power. So Luke gets to shoot. Holy cow. So that's two critical hits. He could still win on two critical hits. If one of those face-up damage cards, assuming he gets damaged, and assuming he doesn't dodge any of them, uh, if one of those is a direct hit, that adds another damage to the two, and that would be three, and he's out. Now, that's the, that's the best-case scenario for Luke, but he hasn't even rolled his defense die yet. He gets three defense... Is, is he at range one or two? Yeah, I, I eyeballed it. it was range, it's range two, I figured. All right, so he's going to go ahead and roll. And wow, okay, so... Here's his dilemma. He rolled two blank and a focus. If he spends his focus token to make this into an evade, that means he still has to suffer one critical hit. But at least he's still in the game. There's no card in the damage deck that does two points of damage to you. So he knows, he knows that if he uses his focus token, that uh, at most he could receive two damage, one from just what, one from whatever the face-up cards end up being, if, and then two if it's a direct hit. Okay, so um, he, he may do that, or he might save his focus. He might go, you know what, I might risk the two critical hits and hope that it's not a direct hit. And in which case, I have my focus here for attacking, and then I can finish him off. Uh, I have a better chance of finishing off Luke if I do that. So he's going to play it safe. He's going to spend his focus token and turn this into an evade. So that's one face-up damage. And lo and behold, this was a direct hit. Had he not done that, he would have blown up. Again, two critical hits. He would have two face-up damage cards. And this is another direct hit. So he would have been one, two damage, and then three, and then four. So he would have been hit four times had he not done that. Instead, he gets one face-up damage card because of this critical hit here. He takes another face-down damage card. Now this card gets flipped face-down after. So that's that. So now he's, he's almost out of the game. So, but he's going to shoot Luke back now. And at this point, I'm not going to save Luke through the Force if he gets killed, because uh, I, as much as I want to save Luke, my battery life is more important. So what we're going to do... I'm sorry, Luke. I apologize. Um, <laughs> I'll make it up to you when I go see your movie in, in December. But uh, the TIE Fighter here gets two attack dice, two hits, and Luke has to roll and evade in the Focus, or because the Focus, again, he has that special ability. And it's one evade, one blank. That's one face-down damage card. Unfortunately, Luke is out of the game. The Force could not save him this time. Okay, so there you have it. Another not-so-quick look at X-Wing. Again, apologies to you veterans out there. This was probably very boring for you, but again, this was more meant for the beginners and the newcomers that wanted to see a game uh, using components only from the core set. Again, I had an extra attack die there that does not come with the core set. Uh, but it was more convenient for the video. Um, yeah, it was a pretty close game, uh, but I kind of suspected that Luke was going to lose the moment his proton torpedo roll came up the way it did. I mean, come on, three blanks and a focus? Come on. That is the worst possible thing you could possibly... Well, not the worst. I mean, four blanks would have been worse. But still, that proton torpedo, he was counting on that to take out one of those TIE fighters early, or at least do a lot of damage, because... When you've got a swarm of TIE Fighters, again, two TIE Fighters doesn't really constitute as a swarm, but when you've got a lot of TIE Fighters, you want to take them out as quickly as possible so that they can't, they can't just, you know, steamroll you, you know? So that's what Luke was trying to do, and that's what the Proton Torpedoes were for. Unfortunately, the roll kind of just sucked. So he had to rely on his lasers and his not-so-great maneuverability. The TIE Fighters are a bit more maneuverable than the X-Wings. Um, they don't, uh, the TIE Fighters really can't go, like, one straight ahead. They can do a one-hard bank. Whereas the X-Wing can do like a one straight or a one bank or something like that, or one slight bank. Whereas the TIE Fighters, you know, all, all they can do is just turn really fast. But, yeah, really close game. Um, hopefully this helped you newcomers out. 
Uh, if you guys want to see more videos like this, uh, let me know. Let me know what ships you want to see, uh, and I'll try and cater to specific expansion packs and the like. Um, and another thing, Luke could, instead of the proton torpedoes, he could have equipped R2-D2, and then using those green maneuvers, he could have regained his shields and lasted a bit longer and possibly could have beaten those TIE Fighters. So that's another thing. Instead of the proton torpedo, which was one use, R2-D2 will stay with you, and R2-D2 is in the core set. R2-D2 will replenish one of your shields every time you use a green maneuver. So that might have been better for Luke in this game. That might have actually made him win. But anyway, um, again, if you guys want to see more gameplay, let me know. If you haven't already, subscribe to my YouTube channel and check out my official website, www.dadsgamingaddiction.com. This is Vince. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.